This is a brand new spool of Jesse PETG from Printed Solid. And I've had a lot of luck improving my prints drying my filament over the years, but just how much do you need to dry it, and how much of an impact does it make? What's up everyone, Chris here, and believe it or not, for this video, I decided to go back and re-record a few of these segments. So you're actually talking to future Chris, and you don't even know it, because I've already done all the testing for this video. But while I was in that process, Tom over at Tom3DP released a video about how moisture impacts all different types of filament. And if there's one thing that I can say to anyone that creates content, don't hold back content just because someone's already done it. You're going to do it a completely different way, offer a different point of view, and this is for your subscribers as well. People that enjoy consuming your content might not like to watch others' content. So go ahead and make that video. So, I decided to add this in here and continue on. Now, let's talk about filament and how moisture might impact it. For this video, we're going to be focused on PETG. There are a lot of different types of filament that can be impacted by humidity or moisture level, but PETG is the one that I'm most familiar with. I do use a lot of it down here in the basement, and as it gets consumed by the printer, it's left in open air, and it does pick up moisture, and you can see that in the print quality over time. But then you can dry it out and it will resume just like it was when you took it out of the package. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow the life cycle of a spool of filament. And it's hard to measure the amount of moisture that filament picks up unless you're doing it in mass. So we're going to use a whole spool. So we're going to go from opening the package. How heavy is it then? We're going to dry it out a bit. We're just going to run through some scenarios over days and see how much moisture this filament might pick up. This could be interesting, but let's start with a baseline test. So here in the basement, we can expect anywhere from 30% humidity all the way up to 55%. It is climate controlled year round, but here in the winter it does get pretty dry. But even at 30%, I'm expecting it to pick up some moisture. And after we do all of our tests, we go through day after day, we're going to gauge the whole thing by weighing it. I just made this little cradle here. I can leave that in the description if it's something you're interested in. But we should be able to tell if we're picking up any moisture. Most filament manufacturers are going to pull the air out of the packing before they send it to you, printed solid included. And they also do include desiccant in here to help keep it dry. And as I mentioned before, the manufacturing process, they go to great lengths to dry this stuff just so they can extrude it into filament. So let's just see what the baseline is for a fresh spool of printed solid Jesse PETG. Fresh out of the bag, we are weighing in at 1 kilogram of 347.8 grams. That's spool included. So let's do a quick test print and then we'll check that spool weight one more time. And just a quick weight check now that our first set of test prints are done, we are at one kilogram, 324.5 grams. And here's the first set of test prints with the spool fresh out of the bag. They look really good. There is a touch of stringing. That's pretty common for PETG. These are all default settings from Prusa Slicer, 0.2 layer height. We're running at 250C while printing for the hot end, which is kind of high for PETG, but I like to run it just a little bit hot. But print quality is looking really good. No problems at all. And I did a flat print as well, just to make sure that the benchy wasn't hiding anything from us. It might be just a little bit easier to see artifacts on a flat print like this, especially when the filament starts to get wet. You'll notice little dots here and there from where the steam actually escaped the filament. So again, we're good to go. So there's our baseline test prints with the filament fresh out of the bag. But there's one thing I'd like to know. Does this filament have any time to gain moisture from the time that it gets made to the time that I start printing with it? I have full faith in printed solid that they have a quality product, but I'd still like to know. So I want to dry this filament out before we continue. And I use print dry to dry most of my filament most of the time. And because I use the print dry system for these tests, we're going to go with what they recommend for settings on drying PETG. They suggest 65C for two hours plus. Now that is the rating at 500 grams. 
So we're going to go four hour sessions for each one of our tests. We won't dry until we get to the end other than this initial one. So for this one, I'm going to stick it in the dryer for four hours at 65 C and then we'll take another weight. And after four hours of drying, we are at one kilogram, three to three point nine grams. So we have had a reduction in weight. We were at three to four point five grams. So this could get interesting. So after four hours of drying, what's another half a gram between friends? Probably nothing, but we're going to go ahead and run another test print. And here's a look at the test prints after four hours of drying. There's really no difference in these versus fresh out of the package. I just wanted to make sure, so I thought it was worth a test. They still look really good. And here's a look at our spool weight after that test. We're at 1301 grams. And this is the weight that we'll be at as we let the spool set around for a couple of days and see if it picks up any moisture. So now comes the super exciting part of this video that I know all of you can't wait to see. We're going to wait for a really long time and see what happens. So let's get started. And here's our weight after 24 hours in, 1301.3 grams. And after five full days out of the package, we are gaining some weight, but very slowly. We are at 1301.8 grams. This is day five. Again, let's go ahead and run another test print. After that test print, our spool weight is 1278.7 grams. And here's the day five set of test prints. Again, not much change, but you can tell that the benchy is just a little bit stringier than the test before. So let's keep on going. Day 15, we're at 1279.4. We're going to let it set for a while longer before the next test print. And now we're on day 25. We're at 1279.1 grams. We've actually lost a little bit of weight. But now, since it's been 25 days, let's go ahead and take another test print. Spool weight after that day 25 print was 1256.4 grams. This one's kind of interesting. The flat part here, really nothing has changed. But the benchy, the stringing has changed a little bit. I ended up with this really large one, and I have seen that before, but I'm not sure what causes it. I don't know if it's degradation in the filament, it's getting burned up, or the hot end is collecting strings and dropping them, but definitely something to note that I did see that. So we'll keep on going. This is day 38, we're at 1255.9. Again, we lost some weight. Now it has been really cold and really dry here lately. So maybe the changing of this filament is actually this fluid, no pun intended. So let's keep going. And here, this is what I'm going to call the final day. This is day 50. From the last measurement we took to this one, we're exactly the same. 1255.9. I am going to run a few more tests. We'll get a final weight and we'll see where we're at.
And after 50 days and all the test prints, here's our final weight. We're at 1226.9 grams. And here's the test print from day 50. And seeing the results and the weight and how we've gone up and down, I'm not surprised there's not much difference here. There's still just a little bit of stringing. Most of it came from the smokestack as the printer backed away. Still a really good looking print. The flat print, almost identical. I even did this retraction test just to see what it'd turn out like after 50 days of setting out. It's a little bit stringy, but I don't know that that's much out of the scope for PETG. But I am going to test it one more time. So the results of these tests after 50 days are somewhat unexpected to me. I thought the PETG would continue to collect moisture, even though the humidity down here is pretty low this time of year. What we actually saw was it yo-yo. It would gain a bit, it would lose a bit, depending on the humidity level. So now let's go ahead and bring it full circle. I'm going to go ahead and dry this filament spool out one more time just to get a final weight. And here's after four hours in the dryer at 65C. We lost a little bit of weight, but not very much. Let's go ahead and let it go four more hours in the dryer just to see if there's a difference. And after eight hours in the dryer, we did lose just a little bit more weight, but probably not enough to make a difference. I do want to give that retraction test that I showed you. It was kind of stringy. Now that it's been in the dryer, I want to give it one more shot. And here's the retraction test after eight hours of drying. It's not a lot different than the one before, but it is an improvement. So this is the one after the drying. This is the one after all the tests. 50 days left out in the open. You can definitely tell it's a lot stringier. The extrusion, especially when it gets a lot smaller in here, it's definitely not as consistent. So the drying did improve the print. So drying your 3D printer filament. Now again, this video was just focused on PETG because that's a filament I have the most experience with moisture affecting your print quality. And going into this test, I was under the assumption, for some reason, that if your filament was impacted by moisture, you weren't going to be able to recover it unless you actively dried it at a somewhat higher temp. But that wasn't the case. Based on the environment that you're 3D printing in, you saw in the time lapse where we got over 50% humidity, we did see the filament gain weight, but then we were down around 30% for several weeks and it lost weight. So it really didn't affect the print quality on these prints very much. Now, is it a good idea to store your filament in a dry box or dry it before you use it? Yes, you do see the print quality improve like you did on this retraction test. Now, how much your mileage is going to vary. I also think we picked the absolute worst time to do these tests. It's winter time, the humidity is relatively low. So maybe we need to take a step back and try this again in the summer months. I would be really curious to see what those results are. So this won't be the last time we do something like this. It did take a long time to get all this together, but that's it for today. So hopefully you found this interesting. I know I did, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.